Hi, this is Erin Lincoln. I'm here to show you how my new Vintage Favor Box works with the Just a Little Stamp Set and Die Set. As you can see here with this box that has a window in it, it has lots of stamp details, it's filled up with some granola mix, it's super cute and super fun to make, and I'm going to show you how to put it together and a couple little tricks along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, here is the Vintage Favor Box with its optional zipper. And here are the dies and the Just a Little Something die collection that coordinates with the stamps and can be used on the Vintage Favor Box or on cards or other projects. It's very versatile. Okay, you can create this box using a single sheet of cardstock cut in half. We're going to go ahead and do all the die cutting first. Here's my Vagabond. And there's a little bit of a trick when it comes to the cutting. Well, maybe a couple. But if you just watch the video and follow how I do it, you guys are going to be good to go. We're going to run it through first once and then twice. And there's still plenty of cardstock left over for another project. So this is a very economical thing to do. There's one. We're going to run through the second one. Probably do a better job of conserving paper here, but it's all about getting the video done. So we're going to go ahead and run this through again. Vagabond Bond is amazingly silent, right, when you uh, take out the audio and dub over. Okay, <laughs> what I would do now, once you have your two pieces cut out, I would lay it out as you would assemble it. And what you need to do with this die is you're going to use the front side of one cut and the back side of the cut. And I know what you're thinking. Your plates are going to scratch up that back plate, that back side that you're using right there. But actually the score lines in the die prevent a scratched up plate from transferring the scratches. It's really brilliant. And this way you can keep track of the back and the front. On the back, I'm going to put the zipper die. And on the front, the window die. And that's just so I can see how I'm going to assemble it and match up my dies with the sides and it just keeps me organized. So that's what I would do if I were you before I cut a window or a zipper. And the reason why there's a zipper is it fully assembles and fully closes and the zipper allows you to get to the contents inside. I would lay it all out, match up your dies to your side, and then die cut. And it's nice because you're using the front of one die cut and the back of the other. It's very easy to keep track because the sides are going to look different based on the dies that you're using. Now this is the zipper die and I'm running it through maybe a third of the way down because I don't want it to interfere with any stamping I'm going to be doing. So you would just, once the box is sealed up to get to the contents, you would just flick that little notch and tear it and open it up. Okay, this is a banner that goes across the window that I created with the dies. And it, it, there's a stamp that coordinates and four different sentiments that coordinate as well to go on top of it. So we're just gonna put that aside since we're doing all of our die cutting right now. Getting rid of my Vagabond. Now, when it comes to all the favorite boxes, I like to use my scoreboard to go over the score lines created by the die. And here's my little trick. Instead of using the left-hand side of your scoreboard, use the last line on the right, and that way you can make sure you have the right line, you have it completely vertical, completely straight, because it's the last one. And anything can overhang if you need to, like right there. That's just how I do it just assures that everything is lined up correctly. All right, I went ahead and did that on my second side. I figured you didn't need to see that. Okay, this, I have it all laid out how it's going to be assembled, and now I'm going to stamp it using the Just a Little Stamp Set. Just a little something. This circle that has kind of the openings for the banner goes along that window we created with a die. Just 
kind of finish this up, uh, up nicely and it coordinates with these other stamps. This is kind of the rectangle curly frame and this goes on the edges of the box for the vintage favor box. And I'm stamping Pine Feather Ink on Ocean Tides cardstock. They work really well together. And I am stamping all four of the sides of this box. And when assembled, it has this very vintage look to it because it has these designs and it's decorative all the way around. Okay, and here is the curly frame that's more of a square. And this goes in the front and the back. It always looks like we excessively ink when we do videos, and that's just because we don't want to make a mistake and have to <laughs> redo it. So we're doing overkill to make sure what we're catching on film is going to work for us. Okay, do you see the zipper there, the zipper opening? Where I placed it, about a third of a way down, doesn't interfere with the decorative frame. Okay, also included in just a little something, the stamp set, are these kind of four accessory sentiments. And it is a plain font. It's not a script. And it's designed to go on the edges of the box just like this. And what you do is you read the sentiment on the banner that goes on the front and the thought is extended onto the sides. Now just be aware, and this is something that it took me a while to figure out, you want your sentiments to all go in the same direction around the box. So as you're stamping, imagine how it's gonna fold up and that will give you a good guide as to how to stamp. I like them like they're being red when it's on its um, sitting on the table. Okay, here's the banner that we cut before, and I'm stamp stamping it in spring. Ah, uh, simply chartreuse is what it ended up being. Now the banner edges are separate. It's only one stamp, and this way I could include this in a $15 set. You kind of have to be creative, but you just have to stamp the edges. And now I'm going to take a sentiment, which is sweets for my sweets. Sweet, sweets for my sweet. And remember that little sentiment we stamped is because I love you. So the thoughts carry through from the front to the sides. And this banner fits perfectly on this opening right here, this little bridge in that circle. There you go. Isn't that great looking? It's super fun. Okay, I would like to fill this box up with something that doesn't fall through the holes created by this window. So I took a two and a half by two and a half inch cut of acetate or clear cardstock. I use clear cardstock and I am using double sided tape on the back to adhere it. And this way the contents of my vintage favor box once it's all nicely decorated, it won't fall out. And it is unique in that you can see the contents. It's sort of fun. You can play with all sorts of candy and treats. All right, there you go, ready to be filled up. All right, next we're gonna assemble. Again, double-sided sticky tape. My ATG gun had run out of glue. And that would have been perfect for this. So easy and quick. But this works too because you don't have to use scissors to rip it, cut it, just tear. And this is carried in the store. All right, I'm leaving that top angle, that top edge without glue, and you'll see why in a second. putting it together. 
All right, before I take anything off for the, he the he adhesive covers, I'm going to fill it up with some granola mix that has chocolate-covered raisins in it, some of my favorite. Close it up. Now, I didn't put adhesive on that last flap just because it would be difficult for me to close it. But there you go, all finished. And remember, there is a zipper in the back that's optional. So whoever receives this lovely gift can get to the contents. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and are interested in adding vintage favor box and just a little something to your craft collection. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.